Today we're going to talk about isosceles triangles, and when we talk about isosceles triangles, first part would it would help if we talked about what an isosceles triangle is. An isosceles triangle, by definition, is just a triangle that has two sides congruent. At one point, it was at least two sides congruent. Two sides congruent. So in my little uh, triangle here, I'm going to uh, mark the two sides as being congruent in the way that you would mark sides being congruent, which is single dashes, or if there's two sets, you double dash the ones that are the same. So we can say that the green line here, or AB, is the same as CD. So AB, and in order to not have to show that it's a measurement, I'm going to use congruence BC. These two are the same, so the orange and the uh, green ones are the same length. Now. With an isosceles triangle, there's a few uh, new added vocab or a bit of more added vocabulary to it. Uh, when I have these sides being the same, the two sides that are the same are called the legs. So in this case, AB and side BC are considered legs. So leg, leg, the two congruent sides are the legs. Now the side below is known as the base should have two legs and one base, so my base here is a C. Pretty simple. We also have to uh, name the angles. Angle B, or the angle that's formed as the two congruent sides or equal sides uh, intersect, is known as the vertex angle. So my vertex angle in this case is angle B, or angle ABC, either way. Now, the other two angles, so here and here, I guess I should mark them as uh, being different, are known as the base angles. So one vertex angle and two base angles. So that would be angle A and angle C. Those are the four uh, basic vocabulary terms that you need to know with isosceles, other than the fact that the isosceles triangle is a triangle. Now, the isosceles triangle has some somewhat interesting dynamic to it, in the sense that uh, the isosceles triangle theorem speaks to, so what if you do have a triangle that has two sides the same length? Does that affect the angles, uh, uh, does that affect the angles inside the triangle? And it absolutely does, and I hope can use these. I'm going to make this green uh, ruler my base, and these two I'm going to make the legs. As you can see, I'm going to lay them in a similar spot so it makes sense. Usually I have like nuts and bolts for this part, but I lost them. Anyway, as you can see, the blue and the red are basically the same length, so we're going to assume that they are the same length. Now, in order for me to make them into a triangle, I have to connect them, so I'm going to overlap this circle and this circle, so I'm going to spin them in and get them, and now I'm just going to look and see what happened with that angle. The reason that this is an isosceles is because you can see the distance from uh, these two parts has to be the same, so I'm going to slide this in a little bit and fiddle with it until I can get the angles looking the way I want it to. There we go. So I'm going to look at this angle here. As you may or may not be able to see, it's a little tough to tell, but if you move it up, I'm going to bring it up to the camera just a little bit for you. This here, this angle, shows that this angle is 60 degrees. On the other side, I've locked it in here to show you this angle. It's also 60 degrees. So that's actually locked in that distance. And the reason that's the case, incidentally enough, is because if I were to change the angle, so let me change the angles around a little bit. So I'm going to keep this one at, uh, or I'm going to change this one to say 50 degrees. So I'm going to go up here, make it 50 degrees right there. And I'll do this one at a different angle, so let's say I'll keep it at 60 degrees. So I'm going to do this side at 60 degrees. Right there. 
that's what it looks like when this one is 50 degrees and this is at 60 degrees. But as you can see, the tops overlap with each other. They don't actually connect at the ends, which shows you that you're kind of locked into that 60 degree thing. If I change this to 120, they can't connect. It doesn't make a triangle anymore. So when you have two sides that are congruent, you're locked into those angles. And that's what the isosceles triangle theorem states. So it would say, Uh, I drew this base angle already. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. And then I'm going to pick a spot like right in here. And I'm going to make my own isosceles triangle. Now, doing so, assuming these are the same angle, which they are, this is about 65. This one's about 65 as well. These lengths should be exactly the same, locking in that information. So I'm going to measure the length, mm, a little bit less than 5. Four and fifteen sixteenths, something like that. Same thing here. So what I need, to, so what I can say is that if these angles are the same, then or these side lengths are the same, or the lengths of the legs are the same, then these angles are also congruent. Now the vertex angle can be different, and it should be. If I have a really flat-looking isosceles triangle, obviously that vertex is going to be pretty big, but these two angles will still be the same regardless of that information. Now, what happens if we try to make a triangle just based on the angles, which is really what I just did? The original theorem should state that, so let's name this A, B, C, kind of jumping around, sorry about that. If AB is congruent to BC, then angle A is congruent to angle C. That's if it's a triangle, by the way. If that's not a triangle, obviously that's not true. Let's look at the converse. What happens if I just lock the angle in? So I'm going to lock the angle in at, say, I don't know, 40 degrees. So I'm just going to make uh, a little dot here at 40 degrees there, and I'm going to make a dot here, 40 degrees, there, and I'm going to run a line through them. I'm going to overstep the line, by the way, and then kind of almost erase things out, but it's really hard to do with marker. But if I did this in pencil, no one would ever be able to see it. So what I'm going to look at is this triangle here the one that's newly formed and not the extension pieces. So anything in red, I'm going to look at those. Now I locked those in, these angles, so D and F, and let's make this one E, right there. Um, I locked D and F in at 40 degrees. Now if this if the converse of the uh, isosceles triangle theorem, or you know, the opposite version of the isosceles triangle theorem, basically looking at it from a different perspective is true, then these distances should be the same. So I'm going to get a little ruler here and just test it out. I'm going to measure the length, uh, about two and three quarters inches, give or take. On the other side, work it out. I'm trying to figure out where the angle is that I started. I kind of made a gigantic mess. And this one is two and three quarters as well. Give or take, I'm not the best drawer. So these are true. So if angle D is congruent to angle F, then DE is congruent to EF. It's just the opposite of what we showed before. I think I can do it better, maybe a better explanation with a little bit of patty paper. I made an isosceles triangle already. Previously, I made an isosceles triangle, so these sides are actually equal. So what I'm going to do now is just fold it over down the middle. I made a little line for myself. Fold it exactly down the middle, and if you can see, if I slide this up, you might be able to see a little better. This angle fits exactly, since I can get it lined up perfectly, 
What happens if I flip the light on? This may flash the screen, I apologize, but it also may work better. Oh, didn't make much difference. But as you can see, there it is. It fits exactly on top. So this angle and this angle will end up giving you the same thing. So that proves my corollary to be, or not my corollary, but tr my theorem to be true. I'm thinking ahead. The other thing we need to know about isosceles triangles is if it, a line bisects the triangle then through the vertex angle. So if I cut this in half, exactly in half, so this. So now my new line is BD. It's a bisector, so I'm going to mark this and this to show that this angle and this angle are the same. That's what makes it a bisector. Just a line coming out doesn't bisect. It has to break it into two equal parts. Now, what I can say is that if BD bisects angle ABC, then in an isosceles triangle, you get a nice perpendicular bisector down here. Then BD is a perpendicular bisector of AC. Well, who cares? What does that mean? Well, it's nice to know that if I have these two angles equal, then AD and DC are also congruent. So it's kind of nice that uh, if I know that angle ABD and angle CBD are equal, then in this case, AD is equal to DC. So I'm really splitting this into equal parts. That'll come in very handy. Where? In the next question. Obviously, I wouldn't talk about it if you didn't have, if there wasn't some sort of question that would pop up. This is the type of problem you'd see. What is the value of x? And it's a little tough to tell. Let me raise it up just a little bit. This is an isosceles triangle because these lines say it's the same. This corner says it's 54, and here is my x. They want this angle, so they're looking for, uh, let's name this D. They're really looking for angle DBC. It's something. Now, there's a couple things we need to think about beforehand. Number one, that there's 180 degrees in a triangle. That's good to know. So a triangle has 180 degrees. I also know that since this is an isosceles triangle, using the isosceles triangle theorem, that if this is 54, then this is 54 as well because of the base angles. So I'm going to write that it's 54 in some other color. Now. Can I find this individual angle yet? Not quite, but I can find this whole thing here. Angle B. I can find that whole thing. It's not the same as this, so I guess I should make a couple lines to show you that it's not exactly the same. But I can find the whole big angle by subtracting these two from 180. So I'm going to do that. Minus 54. Or I could do two and then, or times two and then subtract, but I'll just do them one at a time since I've already kind of gone down that line of direction. And then I'm going to subtract 54 again. So I'm left with 72. That means that angle ABC is equal to 72. Well, what good does that do me? A lot, actually. Now, if you can see, you can barely tell, there is a line here that is marked, as is this line. It means that this line is equal to, or this angle, sorry, is equal to this angle. That means that this line, BD, is a bisector, which is a good thing because we know what the whole angle is worth, 72. So all we're going to do to find the angle that we're looking for is break it into two equal parts. Well, that screams division to me. So I'm going to divide by 2, so angle D. B, C is equal to 36 degrees. And since the X wants to know what the degree is, X is equal to 36. Those are that's the type of question that you'll most likely see with an isosceles triangle. So if you can just remember that in any isosceles triangle that the two congruent sides make these base angles congruent as well. And then if you uh, break up, for instance, this uh, 
if you break up the vertex angle into two equal parts by bisecting it, then your two new little subsegments down here are equal to each other because it splits it up very nicely. So hopefully it was somewhat helpful, a little bit more rambling than normal, but my apologies.